Hello and welcome to another video. My name's Paul Lucas and today I've ticked off an aviation geek's bucket list dream. Welcome to St Bart's. This is St Bart's, one of the world's most unique and challenging airports. Located on a former meadow by a beach in the town of Saint-Jean, the runway is about 2,100 feet long and on a distinct slope. At one end, there's a steep hill which makes approaching the airport difficult. But first, back to San Juan, where my journey begins, and an unusual airport hotel set in an abandoned airport terminal. So the hotel entrance, as you can see, is just here. And this looks like the old baggage reclaim hall. And it's pretty spooky, hey? Everything is closed, except the hotel. So as you can see here, it's a pretty small room and it was pretty expensive due. It was about $149 for the night, but I am right on the doorstep of the airport. This, uh, as you can see here, is the old concourse. This is concourse E, I think. And as you can see, there is nothing going on here. It's all decrepit. This kind of roof area seems to be used as a storage area for the renovations that are going on. I think this area of the airport is supposed to reopen soon, but it's so weird uh, being in this part of the airport. There is nothing going on. Tradewind operates from Terminal A at San Juan and its counters are located next to JetBlue, who have an extensive operation here. I am on the shuttle to St. Bart's and check-in opens an hour before departure. This is a luxury service aimed at the rich and famous, the one hour flight costing up to $679. But I booked very early and took the first and least fashionable flight and paid the lowest fare of $299. Tradewind have their own lounge in the upper level of the airport, which seems to have been repurposed from an abandoned mezzanine level. There are snacks and drinks available, just as you'd find in any other regular lounge, although I'm not quite sure why there are a load of sticks of cheese in the fridge. It seems a bit out of place to me. It's not even 6am yet, so a coffee is in order. Tradewind is a fixed base operator and bypasses normal airport security and simply does a private check before going onto the tarmac. Morning. Morning. This flight exists because St. Bart's, an exclusive island and technically a French overseas collectivity in the Leeward Islands, it sees a lot of travel from people who value the convenience of getting a connection directly from San Juan, which has plenty of links to the continental US. Our aircraft is a Pilatus PC-12, a beautiful eight-seater Swiss turboprop. It's pressurized, allowing it to operate at a decent altitude and has brilliant airfield performance, making it a great fit for an airline like Tradewind to fly in and out of challenging airports like St. Bart's. It's sort of halfway between being a regular turboprop and a corporate jet and is very cool to fly on.
There are only eight of us, so as soon as we're on board, we get a quick safety briefing from the captain and we're good to go. The first section of our flight takes us east from San Juan and flying manually around some bad weather. In case you're wondering, the bump on the end of the wing is a weather radar and the black strip at the front of the wing is a de-icing boot, which essentially inflates if ice gets onto the front of the wing, making the ice crack and fall off. Our flight today takes one hour and we'll climb to 17,000 feet. So anyway, a quick product review, if only to amuse myself. The legroom at the bulkhead is good, although there's no in-flight entertainment. There's free water on board for everyone, and there's a box of snacks and drinks at the back of the aircraft too, although I didn't fancy walking back there in such a small plane. By the way, the check-in staff will ask you for your weight before you board. St. Bart's is a really testing airport, and weight and balance has to be exactly right to land there safely. I was interested to see the safety car displaying facing seats. This PC-12 doesn't have them, but some do. Boutique Air of the USA has some, although I personally prefer not to face anybody else while I'm filming. On our way, we pass several islands, and before we reach St. Martin, we start descending from our cruise. The radar indicates we're passing Sabre, home of the world's shortest commercial runway, although it's obscured by cloud today. We soon overpass Juliana Airport on St. Martin and the famous Maho Beach. Not many people know this isn't the only airport on the island. A small airfield on the French side called Grand Casse operates regional flights and we fly directly overhead as we descend towards St. Bart's.
We're approaching St. Bart's from a direction which tells me we'll be using runway 28. That is landing over the beach and not the hill. This approach brings its own challenges, including threading between high ground and a complete ban on go-arounds once we pass Eden Rock, about 500 meters from the runway. This essentially means if the approach is not good after this point, we are still committed to land. The landing was very smooth and, just as happens every day, passengers are deposited safely into St. Bart's. This is one of the world's trickiest airports. Only captains may fly the landing and a special certificate is required to land here. But it's very safe. The most dangerous part of your trip here will be a car ride away from the airport. Flying is really, really incredible and tremendously safe when you think about it. Thank you. And so I made it. Here I am. I'm at St. Bart's. I'm here for the morning, so I'm going to get my Avgeek fix. Just outside the airport is a memorial to Romy de Hornen, an aviation pioneer of this region who made the first landing at this site shortly after World War II, when it was simply a meadow. Just my luck, the wind changed immediately after my arrival and all subsequent arrivals will come over the hill and not the beach.
Any time now. St. Bart's is beautiful. The Swedish flag here, by the way, references that this island actually used to be owned by Sweden until 1878. But nowadays, it's an exclusive hideaway for the wealthy, and it's very expensive to stay here, hence the day trip. Time to depart, I'm afraid. There's no security check here, and you can sit right in the departures lounge until your flight is called. Here is a picture of the original site Romita Hanen landed on by the way. It's displayed in the departures area. Other operators also fly here. Winair fly to a few destinations, including Sabre, although my flight back is with St. Barth Commuter, which will take me to the aviation mecca of St. Martin, just 19 miles away. Our aircraft, a Cessna Grand Caravan. It's pretty cramped in here and there's just one pilot. The other person on the flight deck is a passenger and I think an employee of the company. All takeoffs happen over the beach. Remember that hill, right? So we're gonna taxi out and begin our short flight back to St. Martin. No more talking from me for a while. Let's just enjoy the views as we fly back.
If you listen to the ATC here, you'll hear an aircraft lined up to take off is having to vacate the runway due to a problem, and we're going to land straight after this. Uh, we got a vacate. We have a faulty indication on one of our instruments. There's someone to crash a goal. What's your vacate, Bravo? Bravo, 2 Alpha, there's someone to crash a goal. 231, continue approach, traffic vacating the runway short curve, Jack. We're ready for departure, reset, final 140. So it certainly feels different landing on the enormous runway of St. Martin compared to St. Bart's. This one-way flight cost me 85 euro, about $93. It's an expensive day out for sure, but well worth it to tick off a bucket list item. Make sure you're subscribed for more content just like this. I've recently flown into Sabre too, and that video will also be coming really soon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.